Now, globally, commercial drone market is forecast to reach 4.7 million units or higher by 2020, with the market for commercial application of drone technology estimated to soar from $2 billion to $127 billion. In a new report released by Alliance Global Corporate and Specialty, the Alliance Center of Expertise for Large Corporate Industrial and Specialty Insurance, the risk in commercial drone usage will spur growth in fast developing drone insurance market, which could be worth $1 billion in the next decade. Let's discuss this with aviation practice leader at our Learns Global Corporate and Specialty, James Van Meter. He will be talking to us from Atlanta, Georgia. Good morning, James. Good afternoon. Oh, well, Good it's Good afternoon here. Right. What's your general assessment of um, global drone market and um, insurance market for drone? The global drone market is experiencing explosive growth right now. As this new technology continues to innovate, it's used in a variety of industries that really touch almost every major part of our lives and will continue to touch every part of our lives. The global insurance market, and specifically the global aviation insurance companies, have innovated to come up with specific products designed for these risks and these type of operations. Along with the explosive growth in this sector, the insurance market is also experiencing great growth. Now, what is the size of the drone market in sub-Saharan Africa? We're talking about the risks, opportunities, and challenges. That's a great question. The uh, sub-Saharan African market is very small at this point. It's very much in its infancy. And it's small because of the lack of regulatory and uh, regulations that allow for use. Um, there have been a lot of outright bans on the use of drones in sub-Saharan Africa due to safety and security issues and concerns. Um, presently, there are really only two countries who have come out with workable drone rules. Um, one is South Africa and one is Ghana. Um, and even in those two countries, there's very small use. But we do see a lot of opportunities in sub-Saharan Africa there are a lot of uses for the technology and humanitarian causes, um, vaccine delivery, blood delivery, um, delivery of uh, urgent medical care, uh, mining surveying, um, surveying and uh, control of, uh, of poaching operations. There are a ton of opportunities and a ton of uh, uses for the technology in this emerging market. Some of the risks, though, are very much the same as they are in the United States and Europe. Um, the biggest risk is mid-air collision with the passenger aircraft. Um, loss of control of the UAV, uh, and flyaways. Now, James, before I let you go, how can insurance companies in sub-Saharan Africa tap into the opportunities in drone insurance, and how can it impact businesses and enterprises? Insurance companies can help by partnering with legislators and lawmakers to help develop safe regulations in a safe environment for this technology to go ahead and be used. They also can help by developing products to serve the UAS community. Um, providing good quality insurance to the UAS operators helps grow the business, and it also helps protect the general public. And I think it'll help go a long way to help with the safety and security issues if there's some legitimacy built behind the drone industry with the help of insurance. All right, thank you very much um, for your time, uh, James. Uh, that was um, uh, James Van Meter. He is um, aviation practice leader at our Lions Global Corporate and Specialty. I will wrap up this um, program with um, the story. Major private equity firms now is said to have seen a number of top management uh, departures in Africa as the funds grapple with. Um, investments hurt by a weak economy. Experts say U.S. firm Khalil Standard Chartered and emerging markets focused actives have all seen a change of top executives at their Africa funds. Now, one seen as a beacon of growth, private equity firms expanded their businesses in the region just before the financial crash. A weak economy and falling currencies have now taken the gloss of a decade of Africa rising optimism. Reports say some investments by these companies have struggled in the downturn. Uh, the changes are these groups, which pull the money of pension funds and international investors to buy, say a stake in local companies, bring this decline into focus.
And that's it on the program for today and, of course, for the week. Thank you very much for watching and have a lovely weekend.